We are at the critical phase of finalizing the assessment and mop-up operations after the fire that has gutted this facility. The specialists are working against the clock in quantifying the cost related to the damage and they will also calculate the timelines in terms of getting the facility back into full operation. This is the responsibility of the operator, the South African Custodial Management. Before the fire incident, the facility had a maximum bed capacity of 3,024 for inmates classified as high risk. Consequently, the facility was forced to transfer its inmates to other correctional facilities. Presently, the centre houses about 588 inmates. A total of 170 are due to be transferred, and some of them have just been transferred now as we are speaking. The facility will be left with about 418 inmates. Unfortunately, the number of fatalities has also increased by three. The causes are yet not known due to the fact that we are still awaiting post-mortem results. As of 17 August 2023, 2,436 inmates have been transferred to various centres across the country. In variable, we have seen a sharp increase in the rates of overcrowding in those facilities. Update on the special remission process. We are also able to provide an update on the number of people who have been released from our centres thus far along the categories approved by the President Ramaphosa through the special remission. Children under the age of 18 years, a total of 18. Youth between the age of 18 and 25 years, a total of 614. Adults between 26 and 64 years, 1,876. Those who are 65 years and older, we have already released about 18. Disabled people, seven of them have now been released. That amounts to a total of 2,533. We are also again encouraged by the work of correctional officials who ran these operations since the date of the incident, who made sure that there is no escape and also there is minimum fatalities in the center. And also they ran the operation up until to date, where there is no escape even up to now. They have used methods of negotiations, also methods of ensuring that there is conflict resolution in a manner that minimizes any fatalities in the center. The contract is designed in a manner that the department pays for occupied beds. Now this institution has lost 3,024 beds. Basically all the beds have been lost. We are not going to pay for those. We are not paying for those currently. And then in terms of the renovations uh, to the facility itself, that is covered in the contract is the responsibility of the contractor. How the fire started and um, all the damage is still a subject of investigation. But from the preliminary reports, it does show that they might have used that fire lighter to spark the fire. But the final report will definitely show with certainty that that is where the fire started and this is how they ran from one facility to the other during that period of mayhem. As we'll have seen in some areas, they created holes where they were jumping in and, uh, and burning and all that. We are satisfied with the fact that they have also already started with the process to clean up and mop up the facility. As we have seen that it, it is beginning to be clean and there's an area, a small area, where some of the inmates can, can converge and, uh, and be able to, to stay. Sometimes government officials uh, work a thankless job. I mean, it's not supernatural that there was no escape at all. Even with the, the transportation across the country, which they are doing on a day-to-day -day basis, transporting more than 100 offenders across the country, it's no child's play. It's a serious operation, and they, they have been dealing with it under pressure with serious emergency. So on behalf of government, we really thank the work that has been done by the officials here.